you ever wonder what your life would be like if you never acted on what you were inspired to do? You see, we make decisions and decisions make us. I want to tell you an amazing story about an ordinary guy and an extraordinary God and show you too how you can make a difference in this world. Hi, my name is Dan Glashevsky with the Matthew 2535 Foundation and I want to take the next few minutes to encourage and motivate you and challenge you to do something amazing for God. I grew up in a very dysfunctional, alcoholic home, a very fearful, insecure child. Football almost seemed to, to save my life. At 10 years old, I got involved in football. It was probably the first time I ever heard any kind of positive affirmation. By 12 years old, I'm drinking, gambling, experimenting with drugs, hanging out on the street. I even joined a fraternity at the age of 16. But the thing I really lacked most was a relationship with my father. My dad never did anything with me. I played sports all my life. He never came to a single game. And as much and as hard as he, he was on me, I still wanted his approval. I'll never forget one day arguing with him. He's drunk. We're in the living room. We're pushing each other back and forth. And I said, I'm never going to be like you. But you know what? I grew up to be just like him. In fact, from 17 to 28 years old, I drank every single night many nights completely out of control, not even remember what I did the night before. Until one night when God completely changed my life. At 28 years old, owning a bar in Williamsville, New York with my best friend Pat, God miraculously delivered me overnight of an 11 year gambling and drinking addiction. I sold my bar and I walked away forever from the only life that I really knew. With the sale of my bar business, I had $2,000 that God parlayed into a successful real estate business. And I say that it was God because I had no schooling, barely passed high school, one semester of college, and when I bought my first piece of property, God was already working in my life and just the thing just grew dramatically. I want to encourage you that no matter what your circumstances are, God is able to completely transform your life. Whatever He's done for me, He can do for you. I'm standing here in Choloteca, Honduras, where the Children's Lighthouse Orphanage was built by God using two ordinary people just like me and you. I want to introduce you to several men who gave up everything to serve God in the foreign mission field. In contrast, I've sacrificed very little. I just see myself as a tool used by God. With the initial goal of building an orphanage in a third world country in 2007, I took my journey to Choloteca, Honduras in search of where to build. There I met Barry Ritchie, not only running a ministry but supporting eight orphans completely under budget. He asked me, what do you do when your life raft is full to capacity and sinking and there's more people drowning? You just pull another one in. While Barry was living in Honduras in a crowded home with eight orphans and the dream of building an orphanage, I was living in Buffalo, New York with the vision of the Lord to fund the building of an orphanage and God orchestrated it all. Hello, my name is Barry Ritchie. I'm a missionary in Southern Honduras. We came down here as church planters and we also started a children's home called the Children's Lighthouse. And Dan was instrumental in the very beginning of that, right from the, right from the seed money that he gave us to, to start building the very first construction. And we've also continued as church planters and we've planted nine churches in Honduras, two in Nicaragua, and one in Cuba. 
and Dan has been been helpful in all of those constructions as well in one way shape or form he's allowed us to, to continue working with the children the children are now becoming young men that are helping us build the, the actual church buildings themselves. This is the unofficial border between Honduras and Nicaragua. I'm here with my friend Tonio. We're gonna get ready to take some Bibles across the, uh, the river here. We are in the dry season, so the river is not deep at all. Maybe the deepest point, two feet. What season they gotta go about across four to five feet chest high, carry these on their shoulders. Have you ever been on a short-term mission trip? I went on my first mission trip when I was 42 years old to Guyana, South America, and it completely changed my life. Every morning I would walk through the impoverished neighborhoods and I'd look at the shacks and the children playing with crushed up little plastic bottles for a soccer ball. And I, I, one day I just said to the Lord, Lord, I wanna do something about this. Mind you, there wasn't much I could do at that time to make a significant impact. I owned over 50 properties in the city of Buffalo with over a million dollars in debt. My wife and I made a goal to be debt free in 10 years and God did it in just four. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ever think or ask. When I got home, I couldn't get the images of those poor children in those tiny shacks out of my head. That trip, along with the book, God Owns My Business, inspired me to form the Matthew 2535 Foundation. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew 25, verse 35, I was a hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Inasmuch as you've done it, to the least of these of my brethren, you have done it unto me. That's what I wanted to do. That's why the name of the Matthew 2535 Foundation, along with preaching the gospel, I wanted to be able to, the best I could, was meet the needs of the poor and the hungry and the fatherless. We went past one of the police checkpoints with 49 people in the truck and they just waved us by. When we came back by, we had 51 and the guy stopped and says, I think you might have too many. This is a graveyard here behind me and on Halloween they celebrate the Day of the Dead, a Catholic holiday where all the relatives, thousands will flock here and visit the graves and decorate them. And Barry will come down and hand out 10,000 John and Roman tracts that day. In Honduras, like most third world mission fields, these missionaries go through more hardship in one week than we do in five years. For example, the orphanage has been broken into over 30 times. When a container is shipped here, many times the port authorities break the locks off, steal everything that's good in there, and leave them with the leftovers. Whether it's robbery at gunpoint, or poisoning their guard dogs, or just sickness, or people dying, it's a hard, hard life for these missionaries. One week in Honduras and I'll tell you, I'm exhausted and I want to go home. I can't handle what Terry or any of these missionaries do. I, I, I don't have the guts, I don't have the energy, I don't have the fortitude. But you know what, what I do have, I have the money to invest in them. God has blessed me with a business back home and I can give. Maybe you can pray, maybe you can serve, but we, we need to do something. There's a need out there. We need to try and do our best to fill it.
The Matthew 2535 Foundation is a non-for-profit 501c charity that assists missionaries that are doing God's work in the poorest parts of the world. We provide financial support to their labors in digging water wells, building schools, churches, medical clinics, and orphanages. In addition, we support widows and needs in situations where tragedy has struck their family. We give to those who could never repay, just like we could never repay the debt that God forgave us of when He sent His Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins. Can I ask you, what resources do you possess? What platform do you have to profess God's goodness? Can I encourage you to take a step of faith and let God lead you in the adventure of a lifetime? In any community, mutual investment is vital to growth. And I want to just thank the Matthew Foundation for investing in my ministry, my mission in Papua New Guinea. 2010 was our year and we were ready to advance and go forward. It was then that Dan Glushevsky stepped forward and invested. We built a, a Bible college, a Christian day school, some facilities that were used extensively. I'm here now in Capitol Hill. As a matter of fact, this is the building that we've met in for the last five years. And I am so grateful and so thankful for Dan and the Matthew Foundation and other people that have sacrificed to make people like me more effective in their communities. I want to highly encourage anybody to invest in the lives of others through foundations such as the Matthew Foundation. If we don't invest in other people, we will become a mission field. We'll become those in need of somebody investing in us. Let's invest while we still have an opportunity. In 2010, my son and I traveled halfway around the world to Papua New Guinea to build a Bible college for missionary Brad Wells. While we were there, we had the honor and privilege of witnessing a funeral that lasted over a week, and we watched Brad as he shared the gospel sitting on a dirt ground to over 200 nationals that had come to the funeral. When traveling on mission trips, especially with my kids, we like to take at least one day off and have some fun. When Jesse and I traveled to Papua New Guinea, we took a layover for one day to Cairns, Australia, and we were able to go out and snorkel out in the Great Barrier Reef. While on our fourth trip to Honduras, Jesse and I, and along with my daughter Hannah, came across this incredible waterfall where we were able to actually walk behind the waterfall and jump off the cliffs right in front of it. With building the orphanage in 2008 and then the Bible College in Papua New Guinea in 2010, God started to enlarge the vision. It was my hope and dream to be able to build 20 buildings over the next 20 years. God has led us to Thailand to build a small dormitory inside of a refugee camp. We've had the privilege of being able to fund the building of some radio towers in Samoa in the Philippines to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to, to the poor neighbors throughout thousands of miles in those countries. It is a privilege and an honor for me that God would even count me worthy to be able to work for Him and be able to do these type of things and fund these projects for these different missionaries who have given their lives to serve the Lord. Hi, I'm Gene Sharp with Independent Baptist Media. Our ministry specializes in helping local churches, pastors, and missionaries broadcast the gospel around the world using media, primarily radio. Our motto is, using technology, we preach theology. God has opened doors for us around the world in country after country from Rwanda and Uganda to Liberia and Samoa and the Philippines. It's our joy to work with some of the best missionaries on planet Earth and have some of the best backing in the United States from great local churches. Other people we've worked with in this cooperative ministry are people like Matthew 2535. You know, the longer I work in ministry, the more I realize it's a cooperative effort. It's not a lone wolf scenario, this idea of reaching people with the gospel. People working with people, ministries 
working with ministries and how thankful we are for the ministry of Matthew 2535 that have assisted on several projects. So thank you so much to Matthew 2535 and thank you for supporting and being involved in their ministry because together we're making a difference around the world using the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in broadcasting his word and his good news to the regions beyond. Through Barry Ritchie, the missionary in Honduras, we've had the privilege of being able to fund the building of several churches. We're able to build a thousand square foot church that will provide services for a village of 3,000 people for just $10,000. This is Sider. He was just telling me how I've known him many years. I knew him since he was a little boy at the orphanage. And we're visiting again here today. Over here to our right is a church that we funded the building of, one of the five that we did here. We can build a church like this for $10,000. This community right here that it serves is about 35,000 people. The Lord has given me a vision to make a documentary film on taking seven to 10 people that have never been on a mission trip, maybe don't even go to church at all, on a mission trip to the orphanage in, in Choloteca, Honduras. The focus of that film would just be how their lives have been impacted by seeing what I see every time I go on a mission trip, interacting with the children, seeing the miracles that are done, uh, just experiencing life in a third world country. We have been on trips all over the world to Belize, to Haiti, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, El Salvador, uh, the Ukraine, Moldova, in search of places to be able to build an orphanage. We have had the privilege over the last couple of years of supporting a tireless worker in Belarus, Russia, Buddy Thigpen. I'm Buddy Thigpen. I am, first of all, a Christ follower. I am a husband. I am a father. And I also am the president of a mission organization called Trans Russia Missions. The widest window of opportunity for outreach in our area of the Kingdom of God is during the New Year's season. We began 15 years ago to uh, provide a celebration and to meet needs during that time of season for the people where we minister. It, it, it is the greatest time of all the year. It's like Christmas uh, where we work, uh, like it is uh, Christmas in America. And so during that time when people's hearts are more open and kids' dreams and wishes are more vibrant than at any other time of the year, we began to to, to think we can provide not only gifts and celebration and, and all the things that come with that, but we can also provide cold weather medicines and vitamins and even firewoods and things that people need in the wintertime, the harsh winter times that we have more than any other time of the year. <clears throat> and so we began to uh, do that outreach and it grew and it grew and it got to the point where uh, we were we were reaching out not only in our area but in, but in areas adjacent and even down into areas of the, the former Soviet Union where we had never worked before and we began to be invited to be be a part of uh, meeting needs in, in many areas so we reached out to Dan again and he began to help us during that celebration this past year I, I'll tell you about this past year because it is fresh in my heart and and mind this past year, we had that, that, that outreach had grown to such an extent that we did not have the means uh, to meet the needs this past year. We thought that maybe this would be the end of that outreach because we were, we were so struggling. It was at that point that Dan and Matthew 2535 Foundation uh, once again infused into that work, so much so that other people were prompted at that point because of what Matthew 25, 35 did, they would also uh, donate to that work. And I will tell you without hesitation that this past year was the best and widest and most effective outreach that we have ever had. And I can di di directly point back uh, to what Matthew 25, 35 Foundation infused into that work. The Ministry of Trans-Russian Missions has profited 
in so many ways because of our partnership with Matthew 2535 Foundation. It was a good day in our life, in the life of our ministry, when we accepted the principle of Matthew 2535. And it was a marvelous and encouraging and wonderful day when we were introduced to the organization called Matthew 2535 Foundation. It will be our desire and our goal to partner with Dan and the work that they do through Matthew 2535 until Jesus comes again. The Lord's most recent work that we've been doing with the Matthew 2535 Foundation is out deep in the bush in Zambia, Africa. For nearly 20 years, we've been working in Sub-Saharan Africa with a message and focus around one of life's greatest needs, hope. The struggles of life can be very real, and for many in majority world cultures, it's hard to envision a better tomorrow when there's little hope of getting through today. As a faith-based organization, we believe that for us to affect real change, it must first start with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Whether on the streets of New York or in the bush of Zambia, how one approaches issues such as development, education, or building community is reflected in their own life outlook and purpose. For this reason, our primary goal at Hope Zambia is in building people's faith, teaching about who God is, and understanding our place in His redemptive plan. We're building disciples and in turn, bettering people's lives. It's only because of people like you and organizations like the Matthew 2535 Foundation that have helped keep the work at Hope Zambia alive and moving forward. While our main emphasis is on spiritual work, we're also involved in a number of humanitarian projects. Our desire is to provide in a way that both meets needs and empowers people in their daily lives. The word for hope in one of Zambia's local languages is Chambakezo. This is the name we've adopted for our church and headquarters in the village, Chambakezo and Pingoa Baptist, Hope Baptist Church. These local believers came together in June of 2017 and have been steadily growing since. Our early days found us under a tree, and from there we eventually moved to a mud building with a grass roof. The Matthew Foundation and so many others all came together when the time came to build a more permanent structure to meet in. This building not only serves as a place of worship, but also for hosting events with the local clinic and helping expecting mothers with our community baby basket program. Hundreds of women have been helped with the essentials they needed to have a safe and healthy delivery for them and their children. Another need that both the Matthew Foundation and Hope Zambia have teamed together to address is the issue of clean water. Hand dug shallow wells are easily poisoned with surface contamination. It's dangerous and a problem that affects whole communities. Throughout the years, we've had the joy to partner together in drilling several wells. Projects like this affect thousands of people and not only promote sanitation and cleanliness, but also the people's general well-being. In conjunction with installing these deep wells, we're also preparing a fruit tree orchard that will be run by Chambakezo as an outreach to help its people and the local community. This is a joint effort to fight hunger and malnutrition in a way that's both sustainable and far-reaching. Partnerships like the one we have with the Matthew 2535 Foundation are essential because by ourselves, we can't achieve what we can do together. There is hope in Jesus Christ, and there's something we all can do if we work together.
In 2017, I journeyed with my daughters Grace and Gloria to Zambia, Africa to see the exciting work that Damon was doing. I was amazed to see how primitive the village was and the desperate need for clean drinking water there. While we were there, we drilled the very first of our three water wells. It was a sight to see when we hit water, to see the villagers break out and dance, the children splashing in water. Incredible. It brought tears to my eyes as the water poured across the dry, barren ground and the little children were scooping it up with their hands to take a drink. During the several church services and the village visits, I had the immense privilege to lead four different villagers to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We also met a woman in her 30s who had never walked, and while we were there, we were able to find and purchase a wheelchair for her. On our first day there, we were privileged to be able to take part with Damon's baby basket ministry. In addition, we stopped by the construction of the fruit tree orchard and we were able to stack over 25,000 bricks for the church building. It is an honor to be able to assist and play a very small part in this life-changing ministry in Zambia, Africa. One of the great joys in my life that the Lord has done is to be able to instill in my children the, the love for God and missions. In 2014, I was able to fulfill a long-time goal of taking my entire family on a mission trip to the orphanage in Honduras. Yeah, I remember uh, saying goodbye was, was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I was, I think, 12 years old at the time, and, and we were staying in this hotel, and there's, you know, the gate in the front, and it's kind of shaped like a horseshoe or a U in, in the courtyard in the middle. and. Uh, you know, I remember the missionary came with all the orphans in the truck and everybody saying goodbye. And I don't, I don't really like saying goodbye even to this day. A lot of times they'll just kind of sneak off or say goodbye quickly and, and get out of there. And I remember kind of doing that and saying goodbye to some of the kids and to, to some of the boys and to Tonio and, and Ricardo and some of the, the boys that I got in close with. And then I just remember going into my hotel room and sitting on the edge of the bed and sobbing uncontrollably. And I didn't really know why. And uh, I'm not necessarily the most emotional person. It's kind of hard to get tears out of me. And I was just sitting on the bed, just shaking and sobbing and, and just so emotional. And you just really get connected to these kids and you feel bad for them. But then at the same time, they seem so happy and they seem like they have such a good life. And it's just easy to fall in love with them and become such good friends with them. And In 2016, the Lord led me to write my second book, How to Turn a Million Dollars of Real Estate into $25 Cash and Change Lives Doing It. It is a unique perspective on giving and using the resources that God has blessed us with to further the gospel. God has been so good to us. When I was living for myself in the world, I could not conceive a life without alcohol and parties. I never dreamed that serving God could be such an exciting and rewarding life. But we don't do good works to earn our salvation. We do good works because of what Christ has done for us. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 8 through 10, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Along with the great privilege of being able to serve the Lord in missions, God has opened a door for me to be able to share my testimony in different prisons around the country. My first book, Set Free, which is my personal testimony, is an effective tool to be able to use when I go to speak in the prisons. When the men can see that there's other people like them who have struggled growing up without a great father figure in their life, I can make a connection with them and help them to understand that God loves them and can change their lives and give them a good, great, fruitful life. I am so thankful to God and privileged to be able to play a small part in the ministry of all these men of God. I hope I accomplished my goal of not showing you what the Matthew Foundation did or what I did, but to motivate you, to show you that God is a great God and can do extraordinary things 
through just ordinary people like you and I. I just want to thank you for watching our film, and I pray that God has been glorified in it.